All right, y'all, so it's time. I'm getting ready to make my first whole haul. I've done my research, and I'm pretty sure I know exactly what I'm doing. Now it's time to go into Kingsley's. We're gonna pick up our haul. About to be 89 pounds of that damn good loving. Well, shout out to Kingsley's for hooking up this pig for us. Good old Louie. Louie was a good pig. Look at that. He did that whole thing by himself. Let's make our injection, then I'm also gonna turn it into a sauce. Two containers of white grape juice. One container of mango juice. We got us a little bit of meat tenderizer. A bunch of Worcestershire. Now we need some of that Dano's hot chipotle. We're gonna sprinkle a bunch of that in there. Give it a little test. Tastes pretty dang good. So now, we're gonna bring this to a boil, basically brew it like tea. All right, now we've let this boil for a couple minutes. So we're gonna turn it off, let it cool off for just a bit. Now you need some cheesecloth. You fold it and fold it again, kinda crooked wise, so you can lay it in your strainer and cover the bottom. Set it into a pot. And now we strain through our cheesecloth. That's why you wanna go slow. You don't want it to pull down. Now the reason why we're doing this, when we put it into our injector, we don't want the holes to clog, so we're getting rid of all the little chunks. Now we discard our cheese sack. Now it's time to load up our injector. Do it slowly. All right, now we turn the rest of this juice with the chunks still in there, we're gonna turn this into our basting sauce when we flip that pig over. This is a one pound pack of brown sugar. I'm gonna use about half of it. We're gonna use a big old squeeze of ketchup. Probably about a half cup of it. Some apple cider vinegar. We're gonna go in with about a half cup. It's really good, but we're going in with more vinegar. Another half cup. And we're gonna go in with some more ketchup. We're probably using over a cup, maybe a cup and a quarter, cup and a half. Wow, I like it. Let's try to do this without spilling it. That boy good, he real good. He make people that good look not good. Heck, I did that so well, let's do it, see if we can do it without the funnel. People want to comment about me being shaky. Yum yum, I'm gonna get you some of that. All right, now we got our injection. We got our sauce for basting after we flip it. So we'll see you in the morning. All right, y'all, so it's 3.30 in the morning. First thing we gotta do is use our little lighter. We're gonna get this going if my Boy Scout skills still work. So I'm gonna go in here, light up my leaves. Now that our fire's been established, we immediately start to build it bigger because we're gonna need a lot of coals. And the wood we're using today is pecan wood. Now we're gonna get our pit grates clean. I'm sure all the neighbors love that at 3.30 in the morning. All right, y'all, so we're trying to figure out our method to our madness. This was built before the people that live here actually moved in. So what we're seeing is a problem. How are we gonna get in there to flip this hog? We only need one of these grates. We're gonna reconstruct this thing. Now, I'm not the professional, but I'm gonna say there's a lot of unnecessary stuff in here. So we're gonna clean this out, resurface it, and just uh, make it better. See all these leaves? Totally a great idea that we open this up to clean it out and get it ready for the big hole. All right, so we cleaned it up in the middle. We're only gonna use one of the grates because we don't need two. And that bad boy's gonna go right here. It's gonna hold 80 pounds, but it ain't gonna hold 220. We're gonna rebuild this back together. It's gonna be perfect. All right, that took about 20 minutes. But now we got it ready. As you can see, now we can get in here like this, get our work done, flip the pig. You know what I mean. It's definitely 90 pounds. All right, so now it's time to do our injection. So I'm kind of filling this bad boy out. Here we got the ribs. But here's our main meat, here's our tenderloins. We got a lot of meat up and through this shoulder. So I'm kind of trying to envision where I'm gonna be sticking these needles without penetrating through the skin. So let's get started. You can see how sharp these are, super sharp. So you just push it in and then squeeze the button and the injection comes out like this. Look at that. I wish I could show you how sharp they really are. We're gonna give it a pump. So 
So I'm gonna kind of go in and pull out, not penetrating the skin. Go ahead and pull out. Did I penetrate the skin or did that come out the nipple? Yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, if I hold these kind of close to the ribs and just run down the ribs, that'll work perfect. And then I don't have to worry about penetrating the skin. I feel kind of like I'm a doctor. Dr. Dan. Oh, did I get you? Did that shoot all the way over there? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get in this cheek a little bit. Kind of like Botox. Now we're just gonna work our way down the other side. We're gonna go back until we use all of our nectar. Now we got old Louie nice and marinated. Let's get it on. Good boy, Louie. Good boy. You did good. So what they say to do is use regular old table salt. Not kosher salt. Table salt. You know I want to put dinos on it, but we're going to listen to the pros. Now check out my salt layering skills. Look at that. Look at the even sprinkle, even distribution. Heck, you would almost think that I own a seasoning company or something. I'm guessing this is not low sodium. Let's do the math. 590 milligrams times 491 servings per container. 25. 250,000 milligrams of sodium. Yum, yum, get you some. Let's smoke it. So now, it's time to get our coals and start smoking this pig. Get it chopped up and start scooping it in. So you can see we're already putting a good dent into these coals. And we're almost done, then we're gonna build the fire back. All right, so you can see I got the coals starting from about right there, around the outside, around the front, to about right here, from here, around the outside, to about right there. None of them directly underneath. I don't wanna get it too hot because it'd be really hard to get these coals out. So we're gonna put our lid on and then we're gonna see where our heat's at here in about 20, 30 minutes. We can always add more. All right, let's see where we're at in 20 minutes or so. I got a lot of wood on there burning because we don't know where this temperature is going to be. If we need a lot of coals, well, we're trying to get them. So we're just 15 minutes in. We're going to see where this temp's at real quick. 175. We totally need more coals, I think. I think the problem that I did is I spread them out too thin. I probably should have put them in like four piles more like it so they could keep more heat, but we're going to fix it. Let's get it heated up. Now you can see our coals are depleted. So we're gonna build another fire again. We're gonna do this all day long. If this ain't fun, I don't know what fun is. So we're at like 245 right now. I got a log in over here. I'm pushing this big coal in. I'm gonna push it in and move it right over to the side. We're trying to get to that like 265. All right, so we put this on at 5 a.m. Took us about an hour to get up to temperature. And so I'm gonna do my first probe, it's 1030. I'll we'll put it right in the middle of that ham. 144, I'm just gonna poke the shoulder. I'm gonna go on and do it. 170, we're gonna go on and get a flip. Look at this, y'all. It looks delicious. Look at that, look at this. Look, legs are already falling off. I think we're on top of our game, right where we need to be. We're getting ready to do us a little basting and then they gotta get time for tasting. Look at that, baby. Oh, 157, 172, we're all good. We're gonna do a little basty baste. Just a little bit of that juice on there. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna cover it back up. We'll do that again, check it again here in a Hour or two, two hours, stay tuned. All right, y'all, so we're getting to crunch time. It's like three o'clock. 
Now look, we still got our wood burning. We're burning 100% pecan. Nothing else, no oak, no hickory. It's just all pecan. We're burning it down and we're using these embers down here. But it's time to check our temperature and see if we need to add some coals. We've been maintaining it about anywhere from 250 to 275. So we're doing perfect. Now I'm gonna show you how I check these coals. So what I do is I lay down here and I take my little stick and I push these coals back to make sure I don't burn my hand, make sure there's no coals right there. I go to video and I block it so I can get the light on just like that. Now I lay down like this, put my left shoulder down so I can get up and in. Now check my video, see where my temperature's at. Right there, we're just below 250. So I get up like a ninja. And now I know I need to add some coals because we're around 240. The last time I temp checked this was about 30 minutes ago and our hams were at like 180. So we gotta get there because we're trying to serve people at five o'clock. So I'm gonna crank it up a little bit. Right now, our embers are in there smoking, but you're not seeing a bunch of smoke coming out. Why? Because that's blue smoke. You don't want to put the big logs in there. You want to use the coals, and that's where you get the blue smoke, not the dirty smoke. That's what we're looking for right there. I'm gonna go in and turn it and dump it straight in that corner. Get my coals. I'm gonna hold it with my other hand like this, so I can go in and dump it to the side. Now, we're gonna do the same thing, just on the other end. How you do it. All right, so it's been about five minutes and I'll show you after four scoops in the corners how the temperature went up. 275. We're there. All right, y'all, it's three o'clock. People are coming here at five o'clock to eat. We just temp checked the hams again. They're only at 180, so I'm gonna crank this up. We're at about 270 in there. So I'm gonna crank this up, try and get it up to 300. Give it a last 45 minutes of cooking. And then basically we're gonna serve it because we got 50 people coming over. But keep in mind y'all, be kind with the comments because this is my first hog. And once you see this thing, you're gonna know it's awesome. It looks pretty. All right, so it's time. We're gonna take the top off and let it sit for about 30, 45 minutes. Yeah, me I'll get you some of that. Oh. Yeah. You're right, yeah. But I can get it. Let me reach in here, grab me a nice pool of meat. Now I'm telling you what, this right here is gonna change your life. Dip it right there in that juice. I like to say yum yum, get you some all the time, but that's the real yum yum, get some. Wow. Look at the little tail. Yeah. You ever had a pig tail? It was so great. Me neither. No, I'm not gonna start today. Yeah, you gotta get to get the jaws. Well, that's Greg, awesome. I'm actually doing something for you right now. Oh, my man. <laughs> Here we go. We're getting a little juice on there. I don't know, this might be too hot to handle. Uh, take it if you take it if you can. Here we go, baby. Mm, mm, mm. Can I get a yum yum get you some? <laughs> yum yum get you some, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Mm. And he's not lying. I didn't pay him. All right, y'all, I heard the jaw meat's the best, so let's go in. Guess that's the jaw meat. Oh my goodness. They ain't lying. <laughs> that's the yum yum. Oh, there's the tongue. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that. That's the tongue. Greg, you ready? <laughs> here, I'm gonna break the tongue in half. All right, here we go. That's crazy good. That is crazy good. Big shout out to my friends, Brad and Brooke at the Shed Barbecue. I couldn't have done this without you, and you know that. But what I want to show you is when I was talking to him on the phone about how I was going to do this, and he was kind of helping me through it, he said that Anthony Bourdain, when he cooked a pig for him, he wanted to eat the, the back of the eye socket. And it was Andrew Zimmerman that wanted to eat the tongue. Well, we already ate the tongue. That was delicious. There's the eyeball, and there's the meat behind it. So watch this as I poke my finger through. See that? There's the eyeball. I see it. There's the eyeball, <laughs> but then there's that meat. Right there. Eyeball meat. Dang good, dude. There is our tenderloin. Well, I guess it's the loin. I don't know what it is. I'm running out of these. Just run your hands down the spine. 
you can separate it. You go in with your thumb like this on the other side, just like that. There it is. Yum, yum, get you some of that. All right, y'all, so that's a wrap. And first of all, I gotta give big thanks right here to Greg and Tracy, because none of this would be possible if it wasn't for you. And second of all, I gotta give a big shout out to Brad and Brooke at the Shed, the Shed Barbecue. And you know I couldn't have done it without you. He's a world champion and he kind of helped me. I was like, hey, this is my first hog and I need a little bit of help. So he definitely chimed in and helped me out through my first hog. The eyeballs were good and the tongue was good. And most of all, what would we like to say? Yum, 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 yum. get you some. some.